with the smoke, and if he wants to, you know, fight me, then let's get it, man. I'm with it. You and Devin, what happens? Prediction. Me and Devin, I think it'll be a, it'll be a chess match at first. I think he's gonna try to, you know, dictate his pace with his jab to the body. That's that's he has that's one of the the key factors in his game. He has a good controlling jab to the body and jab to the top. But um, like I said, man, I'm not gonna give away my game plan or anything. But I've been in the ring with guys already that fought like him, and I feel like I could break him down. So I think it will just be a, a good matchup at first. But I think my overwhelming aggressiveness will uh, be the key victory to my 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 win. Okay, if Tank fights Taylor, Josh Taylor, what do you think? Damn, that's a good fight, man. That's a good fight to be honest, because uh, Josh Taylor is a is a big 140, and he's a good good ass fighter too, and he knows how to fight at his range and fight at his, at his distance. I don't think that Javante Davis should take a fight like that right now, because I think that Josh Taylor right now at 140 he would win. Okay, now I know you're close to Earl Spence. You guys are friends from the Olympics, maybe even before. He's fighting Manny Pacquiao. Give me your assessment of the fight. It's a good good fight, man. I, I I'm rooting for my boy Earl Spence, uh, knowing the fact that he's been through a lot and he's been through a lot of adversity and man he he survived uh, you know that, that 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 horrible accident where he he almost you know passed away man and it was it was sad seeing him like that and I'm glad that he, he's now walking with God and walking on the right path and taking care of his family and doing everything right and I truly believe that he's fighting and being the best Earl Spence that he possibly can and I think that he's gonna be training hard but Manny Pacquiao is a guy that you can't you know underestimate he's one hell of a fighter but my my heart and my prediction goes with Earl Spence, uh, not stoppage, but by decision. You, I'm sure you've seen Earl being in the Olympics. You've seen him against southpaws and stuff like that. How well does he do against other southpaws? He does. He does very well. He does very well. But the thing is, Manny Pacquiao has a different type of uh, awkwardness and a different type of speed going into that fight. And I think that Earl Spence is going to have to get adjusted to that type of speed going into it. He's not going to. He's just going to have to adapt inside that ring because you can't get that kind of speed and that kind of velocity and that kind of footwork in sparring, man, because nobody else fights like Manny Pacquiao, so I think the first couple rounds, I think Earl Spence is going to have to get adjusted and adapt to that speed, but Earl Spence is one hell of a fighter, and I feel like he adapts very, very well. I've seen him fight in the amateurs, and I've seen him fight as a pro, and he's able to, you know, adapt to every style and be able to break down the opponent, and I think that he's going to do the exact same thing with Manny Pacquiao. Wilder Fury 3, man, how does that play out? Wilder Fury, that's a tough, tough fight. Um, I think it's a 50-50 fight, given the fact that now Wilder is starting to box and starting to use his head movement and starting to throw body shots. I think that if he actually brings that type of game plan into the fight and do doesn't just rely on his right hand, I think it's going to be a 50-50 fight and I think that he could take it if he tries to break down Tyson Fury with the body shots and stuff instead of just trying to knock him out with the head. But if, if he doesn't and if, he goes, if he's still looking for that one shot and trying to go for that same game plan the first and second fight, Tyson Fury is just going to eat him alive. Jojo, if Javier Fortuna is watching you right now, what do you tell him? Be ready, Javi. Be ready, man, because I'm telling you, I had one of the best training camps. I've been through a lot and been through a lot of adversity my whole entire life coming to this point. So I got a lot of hate and I got a lot of anger to let out come July 9th. And I promise you, you're going to be feeling my shots. So you better be, you better have, have had the best training camp uh, of your life because I'm coming. Well, Fortuna just said, I'll get into one no excuses after he beats you. What do you mean by that? Uh, because a lot of people, they make excuses, man. Like, fucking Tevin Farmer, fucking Tevin Farmer started making excuses excuses that his arm and that he had a couple of injuries and shit after the fight and that his body was depleted. So I hate when people do that, man. You just give the fighters credit and like Javier said, if, if, if he does beat me, which he's not, then I, of course I'm going to give him credit because I had, I, I, to be honest, man, I had the best training camp in my in my life that, that possibly I could have had, man. It went truly, truly smoothly and I'm very, very confident. So once I beat the shit out of Javier, I better not hear no excuses either, man, that he was overweight or anything like that. I better not hear that shit, Javi. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. This fight, you go all natural. I'm talking about your hair. Yeah, this fight, I'm going all natural. I'm not dying it. I was thinking about, you know, cutting it, cutting it short or dying it again, but I was like, man, let me just get that old school look again and that, that Mexican look. So I let my mustache grow and <laughs> got my hair long and stuff. So I'm just ready to show up for the for the Alley Fight fans. It's going to be a good, good night.
I don't Thank remember you. them cutting the eyebrows in the old school, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. New school, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, brother. <laughs> rank the, uh, the lightweights for me, the, the guys that are there right now. How, how do you rank those guys right now? Right now, right now, Tio Fimo is number one. Tio Fimo is number one for me. Uh, he's one hell of a fighter, and he's one good puncher, too. He's a big motherfucker at 135. Um, after that, I think Javante Davis is number two. And then we'll have to go with uh, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, and uh, after that, Javier Fortuna. What about Lomachenko? Does he still kind of get up there, or maybe? I think Lomachenko, he's he's still he's still in the in the, in in the in the rankings, but I think Lomachenko is going to move back down to 130, and I think that's going to be a, a better way for Lomachenko as well uh, if he don't get the fight with Teofimo Lopez. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you wanted to work. So, what do you think about the rematch? I think uh, that's that's going to be a good good fight. I think Teofimo is is one hell of a fighter, and I thought he did a great job, you know, dictating the pace right away and, and making. Lomachenko feel his power and make it, making Lomachenko, you know, second guess himself where he wasn't being as open. But I feel like if Lomachenko just goes in there and beats Lomachenko and just throws a lot of shots and creates those angles, he could he could beat uh, Teofimo Lopez the second time around. And I think that's what his plan is. I think that he just gave him a little bit too much respect the first.